In Game Builder's Garage, people make really bad AI, like enemies that either don't move or just don't respond to the player. And today we're gonna fix that. We're gonna try to make an AI that's pretty smart. What you see right here is an enemy that patrols randomly a little square region. And whenever he sees the player, then he'll turn to him and run at him. Today I'll show you the basics of how you build up the behavior of this AI in order to get the chasing as well as the random movement. In order, I'm going to talk about setting up a random patrolling pattern, making an enemy that chases a player, making an enemy that patrols randomly and then chases when the player gets close, and lastly, making the enemy face wherever it's headed. Before going too deep, make sure to check out the previous video on how to put objects in motion in GBG, because otherwise some of what I'm saying won't make sense. First, I'm going to focus on how you get an enemy to patrol a circle randomly. So here I have a little anchor point as a cylinder, which you don't really need to have visible, but I'm gonna be showing for purposes of demonstration so you can clearly see where the enemy is supposed to be going. The idea here is to pick points in this circle randomly and then feed them to the enemy and then have the enemy go to that position. If you remember from the previous episode, this is a standard way to define a circle in GBG. As a quick recap, this is the radius. And here we have an angle that increments indefinitely going into this cosine and sine so that then we can multiply these values with the radius to get r cosine theta and r sine theta. And this gives us the x and y coordinates for a circle. We can graph to see exactly how this works with a 2D marker node on. And here we see that the x and y values are moving around to define a perfect circle. This defines a circle, but I want to pick random points inside of the circle. So what I'll do differently here is use an RNG node on to feed in a random angle and another RNG node on to feed in a random radius. And otherwise the code is the same. This timer stimulates the RNG to generate a new point every 0.04 seconds. With this, we can determine how frequently the enemy changes its mind about a new spot that it wants to go to. This map node on scales the RNG to a specific radius of our choosing. Using a 2D marker node on again, to plot the results, we see that we are indeed getting random values all over this little circle that we've defined. Keep in mind that this method is not completely even with how it distributes points inside of the circle. It has a much higher chance to put a point near the center than on the periphery. We can mitigate this with a map node on with a higher minimum bound for the range. This way, the smaller area near the center of the circle actually has no probability of being selected. In this video, I'll use a standard person node on to look at the results. Now that we know how to pick random points in the circle, I'll show you how to move the AI to those positions. This will be the general setup for an AI. Here I have a cylinder defined as an immovable anchor point to define the center of the patrolling range. This connects to a free slider that is not allowed to move in Y. This way when you bump into the enemy, he doesn't start bouncing up and down. This free slider is connected to this moving sphere, which allows me to define a speed or acceleration for this alien. The sphere itself can be invisible, not solid, etc., so it just moves around. And lastly, we have the actual object, the alien, that will be connecting to the moving block. This code will be the guts for our main enemy AI. Here we are selecting a randomly generated point in a circle, just as we had before. Next, I have two location sensors. These are attached to the alien and the anchor point. With these, these two location sensors give the X, Y, Z coordinates for both the alien and the anchor point. Next, I'm gonna define the coordinates for the difference between the anchor point and the alien. I want to get the X, Z coordinates of the vector that points from the anchor to the alien. So I get the X coordinate for the alien minus the X coordinate of the anchor point and the same thing for the Z coordinate. Now these two calculators point between the anchor and the alien. Now that we have these two sets of coordinates, we take the difference. This is the difference in the x values and the difference in the z values. This gets us from where we are now to the random spot that we want to go to. Then we multiply that by whatever we want for the speed and we feed that directly into the moving box, which I've changed to speed instead of acceleration. The end result is an AI that moves randomly around the circle. We can change the radius of the circle, the speed of the AI, how frequently it moves, etc., by changing the timers and the different constants that we're using. That movement can be pretty choppy because we're moving like a hummingbird at a constant speed. 
So now let's change this so that instead of feeding in a constant, we can put in some other function for speed. So here, for example, I'm just using some absolute value nodons and mapping them together in order to make a speed that increases the farther you are from your target destination. So now if the alien is really far from where it has to go, then it'll go a lot faster. And if it's pretty close, then it'll go slower. As circles aren't super even with how you sample them randomly, how about we go for a square or a rectangle instead? So based on what we did before, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is instead of fitting in random points from a circle, you feed in random points from a square. For the square, I have a timer that every two seconds, it simulates the RNG to create a new X position and a new Y position. Then I just use a map to generate points that are between negative two and positive two, which defines a square that's a four by four square. That now just defines a square patrolling range. Now we can have another option for the speed. Here I have a counter that constantly ramps up what's gonna be the speed, and then I map it to give a reasonable value. Every two seconds, when the enemy decides on a new position where it wants to go to, then we'll also reset this counter to start from zero. This will make it so the enemy chooses where it wants to go, and then it'll accelerate on its way there. Let's say that instead I want an enemy that constantly chases the player. Again, we have the same setup of an alien on a moving object on a hinge to an anchor. The difference is that this time, we want the enemy to go to the person and not to some random position. So I give both the alien and the person their own location sensor. And just like before, I take the difference of their X values and the difference of their Z values. And now these are the coordinates for the direction from the alien to the person. These map nodons control the speed in a kind of simple way. And now this gives us an enemy that chases the player out to infinity. But now let's say we want the enemy to be a little bit smarter. Let's put together the random patrolling behavior with the chasing. Here's what our new code will look like. This is the block of code that makes a random set of coordinates in that square. This is the block of code that guides the alien to a person. The main difference here is that now we need to decide if we want the alien to chase the person or to go to its randomly generated spot. Here's where we use the calculator node on as an if statement. What we want to happen is that if the player is inside of this touch sensor, if they touch this little box by the post, then we want to choose this set of coordinates. And if the player is not inside of the touch sensor, if the player is outside of that radius, then instead we want to choose the randomly generated coordinates. The way to use a calculator as an if statement is to pass in one of the two values as a Boolean, i.e. a value that's only ever zero or one. This wormhole is connected to the touch sensor. If the player is in range, the wormhole will be passing a one. And so here we have the X coordinate for the person times one, which is just the X coordinate. And here we have the Z coordinate to the person times one. With a not node on, the RNG coordinates are multiplied by zero. So when we add the two results together to figure out where we want to go, it'll be the person's coordinates times one plus the RNG coordinates times zero. So it's just the person's coordinates. If the touch sensor is not tripped, then the person's coordinates will be multiplied by zero and the not statement will make it so that the RNG coordinates are multiplied by one. So now we're calculating the, the direction to the RNG coordinates instead. In this calculator node on, they get added together and then multiplied by whatever it is you want your speed to be. In this situation, I used the touch sensor to trigger a map node on, which depending on whether or not the touch sensor is tripped will change the speed. So it speeds up if the person is in the range. In the end, we've decided what direction we want to go in and how fast we want to go there. And so this result gets passed directly into the moving boxes X and Z values. Now we have a more sophisticated AI that chases the player if it's in the box and then forgets about the player entirely otherwise, going on to patrol randomly. Now, if you've noticed, it's a little bit weird that the enemy doesn't really face us. They just kind of like translate around which is, it, it translates around how we want, but let's say we want to aesthetically also make it look like the enemy is walking around naturally. For this, I'm gonna add a Y hinge that connects the alien to the sphere and then rotate the cylinder as required until the alien originally faces the correct direction. The Y hinge allows us to figure out what angle we want to face. If we look at our code, this is the block that gives us the coordinates for where we want to be headed next, but we want an angle to feed into the hinge and not as a vector. This is when the position to angle node on comes into play. 
When you feed an XY direction into this nodon, it'll figure out what is the angle that you need to make it work. For this, we feed the coordinates of where we want to be headed next directly into this position to angle nodon and use a plus minus inversion nodon because the, the input is, is flipped backwards. This inverted angle gets fed directly into the hinge and this rotates the alien so that it's always facing in the direction of where it wants to move next, which can be towards the player or can be towards its next randomly generated position. This is a relatively sophisticated AI, and it's important to note that you don't necessarily need to use every single part of it. For example, here's an AI that will go towards the player and face the player because we're feeding the co these coordinates into the angle operator, and then the AI will move towards that person with this speed, which depends on whether or not they're in that radius. By setting this map node on from zero to two, that makes it so that whenever we hit the touch sensor, if the touch sensor is not activated, it's a zero, and when it is activated, it's giving a speed of two. As a result, the enemy will always menacingly face the player, but not chase until the player gets within its home range. And whenever the player gets near the home, then it'll stop moving. We can also bind the touch sensor directly to the enemy. That way, if the player gets within range of the enemy, then it'll pursue, and otherwise it'll just stay put. As the code can still be somewhat complicated, I'm going to upload this level, which has different AI that we did talk about today, and share the code in the description below. Remember that you don't necessarily need the biggest brain AI. You don't need an AI that does everything. You just need an AI that fits whatever your needs are. I hope you found this guide useful, and I look forward to seeing all sorts of new fancy AI in your levels too. That's all I have for you today. If you like this content, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you around, guys. Later.